Hey friend, it is Kate here. Thank you so much for jumping on my channel and joining me for day 19 of our 30 day progress not perfection challenge. Now if you are brand new here and you've never been in class with me before, just so you know, my name is Kate and I am all about creating yoga, Pilates, mindful movement classes with you in mind. Now right now we are in the middle of a 30 day challenge. If you wanna go back and start from the beginning, I'll put a link up above and you can join in from there. However, as I mentioned, this is a progress not perfection challenge. So it's not about doing every little thing in the correct order. You you want to jump in today that's great go back do all of it do none of it I don't mind it's all about you now for friends that have been with me since day one or at least for a while today's class is all about thinking about our abdominal muscles while we do a little bit of yoga now I have been a Pilates instructor longer than I was a yoga instructor I'd probably been teaching I think for about six years or so um, Pilates before I did my yoga teacher training and one thing that um, was surprising to me was the lack of core awareness sometimes given and for me the more that I can think about the center of my body the easier and the more freedom I have to do some of those stretching if I know that I'm toning those belly muscles I'm turning on all the right places in my body it really helps to protect your joints your ligaments all of those very important things throughout our body as you do stretch. So this is just a, kind of a different way to, to cue and think about some yoga. Um, and maybe you can take that into your yoga classes when an instructor doesn't. That's not, I'm not trying to give, um, to like call out other yoga instructors. I'm sure some of them do a lot of um, abdominal awareness too, but sometimes we just think of yoga as more stretching than um, that. So that's, I hope, I'm, I'm not meaning to like throw any shade to anyone out there. So I hope that didn't come across that way. Um, but I am very aware of that and very, um, that's always in my head. So anywho, I hope you find this enjoyable, roll out that mat, and let's get started. We are gonna start at the top of our mat, standing upright. I have my feet about hip distance apart if you wanna maybe take them a little wider, a little more narrow, because that's what's feeling good to you. You do you. You know this is all about your progress, not mine. But hands can be on our hips, or maybe just let them rest side to side. Before we go anywhere, take a moment to notice, where is the weight in your feet? Forward, back, maybe one side or the other. Could we start to even that out? Think of almost lifting up from your inner arches. Begin to tone your inner thighs towards one another. Tone your thut. Pull your belly button in and lengthen through the small of your back. Anytime I'm standing upright or sitting upright in a class, I almost imagine that someone is holding onto my waist and trying to pull me up and out of it. Keep that feeling as you inhale, lift your hands up, taking a great big stretch of your hands overhead. Make sure those shoulders didn't slide up. Exhale, flip the palms, press them right back down. Again, inhale, flip the hands, reach them up nice and high. You're lifting up and out of your waist. Exhale, bring them right back down. One more time, reach those hands up nice and high and hold. I want you to take your right hand and grab your left wrist. Think of pulling that wrist up and then stretch over to the right. Now something that I see happen here a lot is we knock our hips over. Sometimes there is a reason that an instructor might say that, but I don't want us to do that right now. I want you to lift up and keep those hips in place right where they were. Take a big inhale. Think of cinching your waist as you let that go, both hands up. Grab the other wrist, lift it up, and then take that stretch over to the left. Keep pulling that navel in, draw your ribs towards one another, don't let those hips move, keep them in place. Pull yourself up, take your hands behind your head, clasp them together, open your elbows wide, and ever so lightly tuck your chin just so we can lengthen through that cervical spine. Take a great big inhale, big breath out. Another big inhale. Without moving your hips, a tiny twist to the right. I almost think about kind of, kind of trying to look towards my right armpit rather than even up towards my elbow. Let that go, unravel. Little twist in the opposite direction. Let that go, unravel. Release the hands, lift your head up a little bit higher, roll those shoulders back. Take a big breath here. Big sigh out. 
One more time, swim your hands up nice and high, and we're gonna dive forward. If it feels nice to keep the legs straight, that's great. If you wanna bend, that's wonderful. But we're gonna dive into our forward fold. Let our head be nice and heavy. When you arrive in your forward fold, wherever it is, you can let those hands hang down by your side. You can grab hold behind your legs if that feels nice. But I want you to relieve any tension in your neck. Simply let it go. Nod that head, shake it out. Bring your hands to the tops of your shins, press away from your shins, lift out and away in a little half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, little half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Last time, half lift, stay. This is one of those poses in yoga that we often just move through, but I like to give myself a moment or two in here. It is very similar to a tabletop or a plank in some regard because we are pulling that navel in. We are lengthening through the small of our back. If you feel like you're totally hunched over, maybe we need to bend our knees a little bit more or even lift our chest up a little higher so we can accommodate and make space. We can always think about our abdominal muscles even when we're doing some yoga poses. In fact, that is nice and healthy nice and safe on our body. Take one more breath. Forward fold. Bring your hands down to the mat. And we're going to step way out into a great big plank pose. Find that plank pose. Take a moment. Press up and away from the mat. A big deep inhale. And then set your knees down. You can have them together or apart, but we are going to go ahead and press back into a little child's pose. Think of hollowing your armpits. Think of pulling that belly button up and in. And then three times, wave up onto your hands and your knees. Exhale, tip the pelvis, roll back. This is honestly one of my favorite things, one of my favorite variations of a cat and cow. I like to kind of move through all my joints, find that lovely little rocking and rolling and waking up my spine a little bit more. This next time, go ahead and rise up to your hands and your knees and find a true tabletop position. Broaden across your chest, tone that belly button up and in. If any of us have sad wrists today and we wanna roll up the front of our mat, or even come down to our forearms instead. That is A-OK -okay, as long as our spine is still long and steady. From here, tuck your toes and round through the back of the body. Again, if we're here or down here, we can still accommodate whatever works best for us. Take another breath. I want you to press away from the mat and hover your knees up. As you're holding right here, imagine that little belt around the small of your waist. It's pulling you up. It's rounding your back. Set the knees down. Realign the spine. Find that long, lovely tabletop. Exhale, curl, press away, hover. Set it down. Reach and lengthen. Again, press away, hover. Set it down. Let it go. Last one, press down away, hover and hold. From here, take a great big full inhale. Big deep sigh out. And then unravel into your downward facing dog. You can deeply bend those knees like we have been doing. You can paddle out your feet. You could be totally still or sway those hips. You should always feel free to move and groove and find any little stretching that might feel good to you. Remember, it's not about perfection. We're not going for a perfect pose here. Take a great big full inhale. Big deep breath out. And then as we feel ready, I want you to look to the top of the mat and we're gonna step our right foot forward. Now, this can be a challenging spot for a lot of us. I want you to use that abdominal strength that we work on in Pilates to help scooch that leg up. So sometimes we do lift up into a three-legged dog and I find that to be a little helpful because you can kind of lift your hip up and kind of kerchunk it over if we need to. The idea is to pull it straight into the chest and set it between. But do you see, I even have to make a little space for myself. I lift my right hand up as I bring that foot in, simply because that's what my proportions do. It's not always easy for all of our proportions. So if you need a little like yank forward of that leg, a little helping hand, that's always okay. Now I always need to tent my fingertips right here because I've got tiny little dino arms. My arms are very short. I can't really go here without rounding forward. I want us to be in a spot that we can start to lengthen through our spine. Press through that back heel. Tone your belly button. I want you to think of cinching the waist so much that you're trying to pull your belly button away from the top of your thigh. Take a big inhale. Think of pulling your front heel towards your back toe. Create that lift between your inner thighs. Another breath. 
tone that belly even more and hover your fingertips up. <sighs> Inhale, touch them down. Exhale, tone the belly, hover them up. <sighs> Inhale, touch them down. Every time you lift up, think of, ooh, that belly button engages. All of those abdominal muscles help. They come to the rescue. Last one, up. Bring those hands down, drop your back knee down to the ground. Toe can be tucked or untucked, whatever feels better for your body. Now, sometimes it feels nice for me to rock side to side a little here, maybe even forward and back. We don't have to be perfect. You might need to crawl your toes a little further forward to make sure your knee and ankle are in line with one another. But from here, we can set our left hand on the floor. And if that's too much for our wrist, you could even drop all the way down to your forearm. You could, of course, use a block if you happen to have one. But I want your other hand to come to your right thigh, right hand on right thigh. Roll that shoulder back and look up and over. If we can't look all the way over our shoulder because we don't have that range of motion, that's okay. Just take that twist wherever feels good to you. If you feel like you're curling and crunching up trying to force it, relax. Take a breath. Let your muscles soften and just take that twist wherever you need to. Great big full breath. Big easy sigh out. And then let your hand return. From here, I want us to tip back into our half monkey pose. If our knee does not straighten all the way, that's okay. I like to reach my hands a little bit closer towards my body, and I do like to sink my hips back a little bit further. Some instructors tell you you need to have your hips right over your knee, but I find that puts too much pressure on my knee. Dropping them back just a little bit gives me a little bit more of a gentle feel to this pose. You can kind of point and flex the foot a little bit here. Sometimes that feels nice in my body. Sometimes I like to sway my hips. And then eventually, we'll roll that foot forward. We'll set our hands down, tuck, just like we did in our tabletop big. Inhale, exhale, tone that belly, lift. Lengthen through the back of your left leg a little bit more. Almost press that heel towards the ground behind you. Take a big, deep inhale. Can we step back out into our plank pose? <sighs> plank is a big one. No, you can always drop down if you need to. Take another inhale. Return to your downward facing dog. Give yourself a moment. Think about the fact that we're going to come into our lunge to our other side. What do you need to work on? Do you need to drop your knees and set that foot forward lightly? Do you want to lift your foot up and kind of use that force, use that momentum? Or can we just pull it in towards the middle of our body and step it forward? There's no right or wrong. It's all about doing what works best for your body. But still think about cinching the waist here. Think about toning the belly, opening up through the chest. And then like we did, we're going to pull our front heel towards our back toe, finding that lift, and then up and down about three to five times. You can always do a little more, a little less, whatever suits your body today. But rather than thinking about all of our back muscles lifting and lowering us, it's that punch to the gut to lift and drop down. Exhale, cinch the tummy, lift, bring it down. Last one up, bring it down, set your back knee down. Tuck her in the tuck the toes, whatever works for you. Enjoy the beginning of our little Anjane Asana stretch. And no hurry, no rush. We can plant that hand on the ground or you can keep it tented if that feels better on the wrist. Bring your left hand to left thigh. Roll that shoulder. And take your twist wherever it happens to be for you today. And just breathe a little deeper. Let those muscles soften. This is a big stretch for some of us. And that is perfectly fine. No hurry, no rush. Slowly unravel, tip the hips back. Find that lovely little half monkey. Maybe flex and point the foot a couple of times. Maybe swivel the hips. No hurry, no rush. And then when you're ready, go ahead and round forward. Set those hands on the floor, tuck the back toe, turn on your thut a little bit more. Think of cinching the waist already, broaden the shoulders. You know what's coming, a little plank, take a big inhale. Step back, find your plank pose, another big breath. Tip back, find your downward dog. Now we're going to again use our big deep abdominal muscles, but I want us to lift our foot high. 
If we can, you're going to use those big, deep belly muscles to pull your right knee towards your right elbow. So it's almost like a little froggy bend. I'm gonna pull it out to the side, bring it up and drop it back. Now your knee might not touch your elbow and that's okay, but think of cinching the waist. Our oblique muscles, those side belly muscles should be working over time. Every time we bring that knee forward, last one, send that leg out, set it down, swivel those hips, give yourself a moment. You know you are doing fabulous and lift the other leg up. Same thing here, wherever that leg is, whether it's a little bit lower to the ground, a little bit higher, you do whatever works for you, but exhale, pull it towards your left elbow, inhale, drive it away. Exhale, pull it towards your elbow, inhale, drive it away. Last one, pull it to the elbow, drive it away. Set that foot on the floor. Lower those heels, find a little bit of stretch to the back of the body, take a big, deep, full inhale. Set your knees on the floor together or apart. Maybe do the opposite of what we did earlier today and enjoy our nice little stretch. Take a great big full breath. Big easy sigh out. One more big deep inhale. We're going to again unravel into our downward facing dog. Lift those hips up nice and high. Take a great big breath. Once more, step your right foot forward. Now this time, I want us to come all the way up using those abdominal muscles to lift, and we're going to find our warrior two. Now something to think about in warrior two is your front heel should be in line with the back arch. If it's way off to the side, like one is on one side of the mat and one is on the other, then you say, no, 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 I need you to come back in place. Take your hands off to the side, press down as if there's an imaginary table on either side of you, and again, lift up and out of your waist, just like we started class. Think of pulling that front heel towards your back arch. Tone your thut. And then from here, I want you to inhale, dive forward, reach those fingertips away. Exhale, cinch the waist, pull yourself up. Inhale, dive forward, reach those fingertips away. Exhale, cinch the waist, pull yourself up. Two more, reach out, 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 out. Exhale, pull it right back in. Last one, reach out and stay. Have you lost that engagement in your thut, through your inner thighs? Could you draw those low belly muscles a little bit closer? I want you to flip your palm up to the sky. And then from here, could we take our other hand and almost imagine that you're going to hold onto a giant beach ball as you bring that hand forward and then take it right back. Now this is a whole body activity, but I want you to think about those abdominal muscles helping to keep you upright, helping to keep your low back nice and long. Exhale, reach. Inhale, return. Last one, can you reach and stay? Grab that great big beach ball, take a big deep inhale. Now exhale, pull the beach ball all the way up. Inhale, tip, reach, tone that belly, cinch that waist. Exhale, lift up. <sighs> Inhale, a great big full stretch. Exhale, all the way up. From here, let's cartwheel the arms all the way down. That was a big one, wonderful job. Step back, find your downward facing dog. Sway those hips, wiggle it out. If you're not in the mood for dog and you wanna step straight to the side, you could always do that. But when you're ready, we'll step our left foot forward. We'll rise up and find our warrior two on this side. Just like we talked about on the other side, it's like those two tables right here. You press down into them so we can keep our whole arm activated. No floppy chicken arms here. Nice and engaged the whole time. Cinch the waist, low belly up and in. Someone is pulling you out of your waist. And just like we did before, we're gonna dive forward into that warrior two. And then I want you to tone that belly, lift up. Inhale, reach, 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 reach. Exhale, cinch the waist, pull it up. Three more, out, 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 out. Exhale, pull it in. Last one, out, stay. Flip your palm, flip the back palm, curl, hold your beach ball, and return. Lift that low belly up and in, tone your thut, and slowly return. Two more, bring it back. 
Last one, can we hold that beach ball? It's like you're holding it, grabbing it, catching it. Take a big inhale, cinch the belly, pull yourself up. Inhale, drop it down. Remember, you could always stop right here. You don't have to go as far as I do. It's moving at your own pace. Now, a lot of people like to say, myself included, your breath should be a barometer of your movement. If you are feeling like you are holding your breath, like you are just not able to easily breathe as you're doing any sort of exercise, then you might want to step back a little bit, take it a little slower. That's okay. Last one. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, pull it back. Cartwheel the arms all the way down. Step into your plank one more time. And let's slowly lower all the way down to the ground. Open your hands a little wider than the mat and tense your fingertips. Are you lifting your tushy up? Do we have a Beyonce booty going on? No, I hope not. Press that pubic bone down. Pull your belly button up and in. Inhale, roll, lift up. Only so high as what feels good in your low back. Exhale, cinch the waist even more. See how long it can take until your tummy touches the mat. Again, inhale, roll up. Exhale, those abdominal muscles are so engaged, we feel nothing in our back. It's all abdominal work. One more time, inhale, roll up. Exhale, slowly set it down. Take your hands in front of your face, bend your knees, and a little windshield wiper side to side. No hurry, no rush. Finally, press back, find your child's pose once more. Maybe reach them straight out in front of you. Sometimes it feels nice for me to either bring my hands to a little prayer or even clasp them and simply bend them and touching the back of my head. Now, I won't do that completely because my mic kind of smooshes in my face, but sometimes that feels nice, especially um, on my underarms. But take a big inhale wherever you are. Let yourself relax a little. Can you let your body soften? If child's pose is not a comfortably relaxing place, find any other spot. Maybe lie on your back. Maybe lie on your side. Maybe you just want to take a seat. But close your eyes for a moment. Take a big, deep, full inhale. And a soft sigh out. Another big, full breath in. Let it go. And wherever you are in your day, the start, the middle, the end, can you spend the rest of the day appreciating how strong you are? Knowing that you are doing the best you can. That you are making healthy, smart, and the right choice for you with each day, with each class. And remembering to give yourself a break when you maybe stray off your wellness path. We're not perfect. We're always gonna be a little bit off now and then. And it's okay to give yourself grace. It's okay to let that happen. Take a big inhale. Big sigh out. And roll yourself up to a seat. As always, a pat on the back, a moment again to be proud, to be happy, to be confident with everything you've done. I certainly hope you enjoyed class today, maybe thinking about our abdominal muscles a little bit more while we do yoga. It can be kind of an eye-opening experience for some of us when in yoga maybe we're thinking about stretching more so than the center of our body, but we can think about both those things and it's usually a little bit safer, a little bit healthier for our body. So I hope you enjoyed our little challenge for today and I certainly can't wait to see you tomorrow.